number 18, 1 Kings chapter 18. I'd like to ask this evening uh, if we could please have no food and drink in the sanctuary uh, if possible. I uh, understand if you're a diabetic and you needed something, but uh, let's try to keep food and drink out of the fellowship or out of the sanctuary, please. This is God's house, and we want to just make sure we keep it clean, and it sure would be appreciated. But if you do have your Bibles with you, we'll turn over to 1 Kings at chapter number 18. If you'd like to stay in whenever you get there. <coughs> <coughs> now the Bible reads in 1 Kings in chapter number 18 and verse 41. And it says, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of an abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of uh, Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. He said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. What a simple answer, amen. There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, <laughs> like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. And there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Almighty God in heaven, we come to you once again in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you would help us tonight, meet with us, and uh, pour out a blessing upon us, Father, uh, too big to receive. Lord, I pray that you would humble us tonight. Help us to humble ourselves under your mighty hand. And I pray, Father, that we'd feel your presence. Pray, Father, we leave differently than the way that we came. And I pray that this be a message that these dear people remember. Thank you, Lord, for Main Cross Baptist Church. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be the pastor here. I'm so grateful tonight, Father, and I'm thankful, Lord, for all that you do, all that you've done, and all that you will continue to do. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. I like to preach on tonight with the Lord's help is what to do with nothing. What to do with nothing. I tell you, I've realized in life as you walk along life's journey, there's times that nothing's going on. Amen. There's times that it's just nothing, Brother Charles. There's times that there's not a very much movement. There's times that we wish we could be doing more for God. There's sometimes we wish that we could be having, seeing more things done, more going on. But I'd like to say today that even when nothing's going on here on earth, it seems like there's something going on in heaven. Have you ever noticed there's times in life, and let's be honest with each other today, there's times that it don't seem like nothing's going on. Just seems like there's a whole lot of nothing. But what do you do with nothing? I tell you, we serve a God that can turn something out of nothing. T turn the tables upside down, amen. Flip the scenario. There's been many times in my life that I thought nothing was going on. And then here comes Jesus. There's been times that I've thought that where's the Lord at in a service? And then right on time, here comes Jesus. There's been times I've seen the Lord show up at an altar call. There's been times I've seen the Lord show up whenever service is all over and there's some elderly lady stand up and it seems like where's the Lord at? Where's the Lord at? And then service break loose. I like to say this evening, Christian, that God does things on his timing. God does things even when it don't make sense. Even when we're one and where's he at? What's going on? I don't see nothing, Lord. And then here comes the Lord. Have you ever noticed a lot of times that the Lord shows up whenever you think that he's not? Have you ever noticed that the Lord, here comes the Lord, and you wonder, where's the Lord at in my life? And then here comes the peace that passeth all understanding. Here comes the rain that you was looking for. Here comes the sunshine, the light at the end of the tunnel, amen. And I like to say this evening, we serve a God that can turn something out of nothing, amen. We read in 1 Kings in chapter number 18 and verse number 1 that the Bible says, And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, shew thyself unto Ahab 
and I will send rain upon the earth. Amen. Now I got to remind you something today is the Lord spoke in 1 Kings in chapter 18 and verse number 1 and told Elijah that rain was coming. Amen. He said, hey, rain is coming and if the Lord says it tonight, you better believe you can mark it down. Even if nobody else believes, but if the Lord tells you that he's going to do something, he's going to do it. If he tells you it's coming, it's coming. If he tells you it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. Amen. God does what he wants in his timing how he wants to do it whether me and you believe it or not we see in 1 Kings chapter number 18 and verse 1 that the Lord said rain is coming but then we see in uh, verse number uh, verse number 43 that whenever uh, Elijah said to his servant go up now look toward the sea and he went up and looked and said there is nothing he said go again seven times amen Hey, Elijah had enough faith to think about that the Lord said it was going to be done, so it's coming, amen. Hey, whenever you go back to 1 Kings in chapter 18 and you look at verse number uh, 41, you see it said that Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. You know, I find something very interesting in that scripture. Ahab didn't say it, Elijah said it. It didn't say Ahab heard it. It said Elijah heard it. There's times, Brother Josh, that nobody else hears it, but you might hear something. There might be times that you nobody else sees the light at the end of the tunnel, but you see it, Brother Ralph. There's times our wife might not see it. Our children may not see it. The church night may not see it. Your family members may not see it. But if God's told you it's coming, it's coming, amen. You can lean upon the Lord. You don't have to lean upon man. You don't have to put all your trust in man. Elijah said, I hear something. You know, I find it very interesting that Elijah was aware of his surroundings. There's times that the Lord wants to bless me and you, and a blessing's on the way, but we're not aware of our surroundings. We're not aware of the sound, amen. Elijah had his spiritual ears open. I believe the Lord, Elijah was looking for the blessing, was looking for the rain, was waiting upon the rain. When nobody else was looking for it, Elijah was looking for it. When nobody else was waiting on the rain, Elijah was waiting on the rain. And I believe today that Elijah marked down what God said, and even when he couldn't hear even when he couldn't see it he had enough faith in God to say God's already done it the Lord's already done it here it comes amen there ain't nothing to worry about so what do you do with nothing hey you rely upon the God that can turn nothing into something when you can't pay your bills if God says he'll pay them he'll pay them if God says that he's going to do something you can mark it down that it will be done amen there's been things, Brother Josh, that the Lord has told me and you that has not came to pass, but he's told you that it's going to happen. I've had conversations with you. The Lord's told you, amen, you mark it down, it's going to come if it's from the Lord. If the Lord tells you he's going to do it, he's going to do it, Brother Charles. He ain't like man. He ain't a liar today. He don't make mistakes. He don't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's the God that can make something out of nothing, amen. What a great God that me and you serve. He's faithful. He's true. He's a friend that's sticking closer to the brother. And I'm thankful today that anything is possible with God. It ain't over till God says it over. God can turn something out of nothing. Amen. Hey, whenever man may look down on you, man says there's nothing to you, man lets you down and turns his back on you, you can lean upon the God that can turn something out of nothing. Amen. Hey, I find many people inside of this book, Brother Charles, they thought that these men was done with. They thought that it was time for them to throw in the towel. And Satan thought that he got them. I, think, I like to think about old Joel. And it said to Satan, he, it said, take the hedge off of Job. And he thought that he had Job in his hands. Thought he was going to get him to curse God right to his face. But I like to say today, Job didn't do it. He didn't fall for the trap. He didn't fall into the snare. He didn't fall into the ditch. He kept his eyes upon God and realized that uh, God can make something out of nothing today. Hey, the Lord gave it back to Job two times over. Job's wife said, curse God and die. Amen. Hey, he lost all of his children. His friends given up on him and said, surely it's one of your sins. But Job kept on hanging on to the Lord. And guess what? The Lord made something out of nothing. 
He had boils all over his head. It was all. It was time to quit, Brother Charles. If anybody had a time to quit, one of them great men of the Bible, it was Job. Amen. Hey, the Lord turned nothing out of something. Amen. He couldn't see it, but the Lord could. There's times me and you can't see it. We don't know for certain it's going to happen. Amen. There's times we doubt and we waver and we wonder where the Lord's at. But just keep your eyes up toward heaven because you can see that blessings come from that direction. You know, I find something interesting in this scripture. Elijah knew which direction the rain came from. He knew that it came from the west over the Mediterranean Sea. To this day in Israel, rain comes from the west. It still comes from over top of the Mediterranean Sea from the west. You look it up, to this day it still does. It comes over the Mediterranean Sea. Elijah knew where to look and he told his servant to go up and to look that way. There was nothing to be seen yet. There was no reason for him to go look, amen, other than the fact that God told him. And Elijah heard something. But can I tell you something? Ahab didn't hear what Elijah heard. Hey, what I'm telling you is, is if the Lord tells you, Brother Josh, and nobody else gets it, hold on to what the Lord's given you. Elijah said, go up and look. He comes back down and he said, there's nothing. You know, there's been times in mine in your life that, we, that God's told us something, we've believed it, and nobody else believes it, Brother Josh. Nobody else can hear what we hear. Nobody else has gotten the answer that me and you've got, but me and you've got it. Amen. Somebody's had that happen to them. The Lord's told us something that he hasn't told somebody else, and we, they think it's foolishness, and they say, there ain't nothing to do with that. There ain't nothing with that. Hey, I'm going to tell you something that if the Lord tells you to, that something's going to happen, it's going to happen. Even though it don't make no sense to the carnal mind and you can't grasp it, if the Lord says it's going to happen, it's going to happen, amen. I'm thankful today there's some things that the Lord's told me that's going to happen beyond a shadow of a doubt. Though I can't see it, I can see it afar off. I start to get a feeling, Brother Josh. I can start to see it. I start to pray, and there's something deep down inside of my soul starts to stir and it starts to move, and, and the Holy Ghost gets inside of me and fills me up and tells me it's coming, son. It's coming, amen. It's coming. Nobody else may be able to see it, but I've told you it's going to happen. It's going to happen. The Lord's faithful, Brother Josh. You just got to be looking towards the right direction. Are you looking toward the right direction for your blessings that's a coming? Have you been praying for stuff and waiting for the Lord to answer it? Hey, maybe the Lord's told you he's going to answer some prayers, but you haven't seen it yet. There's prayers I prayed four years ago that the Lord told me he's going to answer, Brother Charles. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm still looking toward the right direction because I know which direction it comes from. It comes from heaven. I'm not looking toward this world for help. What I'm trying to get to tonight is make sure that you're listening to the God that can make something out of nothing. It ain't over till God says it's over. You say, preacher, I don't got nothing. I don't got much. Hey, we serve a God that can make something out of nothing. We serve a God that can make a, a great and mighty preacher out of a murderer. A lot of people looked at Paul like he was nothing. He's a murderer. He's a cusser. Amen. He's a hypocrite. What is this man going to be, uh, be able to do for the Lord? Hey, the Lord made something out of a nobody. Amen. Hey, the Lord makes people, makes something out of nobody today, Brother Charles. The rejects, the leftovers, the crumbs to some people, to this lost and dying world that nobody cares about. There's a God in heaven that cares about them today. We look down on people, let people down, but God ain't ever let us down. He don't look down on nobody. Have you ever noticed God don't look down on nobody? If we could take our eyes off of ourselves and look toward the Lord and say, Lord, help me to see people like you see them, you'll realize that the people you think are nobodies is a somebody. We'll talk about abortion and how much innocent lives matter, but we won't talk about people's feelings and emotions and how they feel when they get hurt. What are you saying with that? We care more about lives of babies we don't know, but, but, but the people that's around us, we don't care about. They're nobodies. They're nothing. They're rejects. They're leftovers. I mean, hey, whenever we describe a lot of people, we describe them because of their sin. That's a thief. That's an alcoholic. That's a drunkard. That's a, a drug addict. Amen. We look at the sin and we associate them with a drug addict, an alcoholic, a pervert, a murderer. And some of us say, well, that's what they are. No, hey, they also got a soul inside of that body that God wants to save. We look down on so many people. We look at people like they're nothing. 
Amen. We look at people sometimes from time to time like they're nobodies. All they are is a drunkard. All they are is a pervert. All they are is a... Hey, let me tell you something today. If we looked at Paul before he got saved, God help us what we'd say about that man. God have mercy upon us. We look at people, but hey, let me tell you, this book that you read inside of your hands, this precious holy word of God is written by a man that murdered Christians, murdered babies, thousands and thousands and thousands and somebody that persecuted the church of God and we read inside of this word about somebody that was a nobody that God used him today it ain't ever too late with God you ain't too old you ain't went too far you ain't made too many slip ups hey God can use you today brother Josh God can use us today church it ain't ever too late until God says it's all over Takes us home to glory. You got breath inside of your body, use it for the Lord. You got a praise inside of your body, lose it for the Lord. Amen. Hey, some people say my testimony's nothing. Not talking about mine, I'm saying to their self. My testimony's nothing. No, 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 no. If you've been saved and born again, your testimony's something. You say, but I ain't been saved out of being uh, in the Hells Angels Biker Club. I ain't been saved out of prison. Hey, let me tell you something. Your testimony is just as good as somebody that's gotten yanked up out of way, 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 way down. God wants to use you today. Whenever everybody else has turned their back on you, let you down, the Lord comes by and says, hey, son, I want to use you. Hey, daughter, I want to use you. You're a child of mine. Come home. What a faithful God we serve today, amen. He's faithful and he's true and when this world's given up on me and you, we serve a God that can make something out of nothing. The Lord formed humans out of dirt and breathed life into them. Don't tell me God can't do something with nothing. I heard a preacher one day, he said this. He said, if there's anything inside of a man that God can use, I want him to use it. What a good saying that is. If there's anything inside of a man, anything inside of a man that God can use, I want him to use it. We look at the faults. We look at the failures. We look at the mistakes. And we look at the nothing inside of somebody instead of the something. What does that mean? Encourage the believer. Help the believer. Show them, point them toward heaven to the somebody that can make something out of nothing, amen. The Lord's faithful. Elijah knew where to look, to the west over the Mediterranean Sea. He knew where the blessings come from. James 1.17 says what? It says, every good and perfect gift is from above. What a God, me and you serve, amen. God said rain was coming in 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse number 1. Maybe the Lord's told you something tonight that hasn't came yet. But he's told you he's going to do it. Don't give up on that prayer. Don't give up on that family member. Don't give up on that friend. Don't give up on that neighbor. Amen. Hey, don't quit praying for those that haven't got saved yet that you're waiting to be saved. Amen. There's times in mind in your life that we see a whole lot going on. Life's good. Life's on the mountaintop, Brother Josh. And, and, and we have praise in our heart, a testimony upon our heart, a song upon our lips, and a smile on our face, and, a, and, and we're ready to witness. We're, we're on cloud nine, as some people would say, Brother Josh. And something is going on. But there's other times in life that we feel like there ain't nothing going on. There, let's just be honest, that it just feels like there ain't nothing going on. Hey, but there's a time to learn in the nothings of life. There's a time to realize, well, what is God teaching me in this nothing moment? Whenever it feels like we're praying and we don't get nothing. We're reading our Bible and nothing's coming our way. There's times when the Lord speaks to me and you and His presence is felt heavily and our prayer life is great. But there's other times that it feels like our prayers are hitting the ceiling. Anybody that ever said that they pray every time and they feel like they get through, they're lying to you. They're lying to you. There's times you pray and it feels like there ain't nothing. There's times you read your Bible and it feels like you don't get nothing. 
You say, preacher, no, that ain't never happened to me. We're humans. We're humans. Anybody that ever says that don't happen's lying. The devil came to Jesus and tempted him in the wilderness. If you don't think there's times that the devil comes by and tempts you and makes you doubt this word and makes you wonder if this word's true, if there's any errors in this word, you'd be lying today. There's times we wonder what's going on, Lord. My prayer life, there's nothing, there's nothing going on in my prayer life. If it ain't you today, it's happened to me. There's been times in my worship that I felt the Lord's presence so thick and so strong and, and there's liberty to worship. But then there's other times, Lord, where yet? I don't feel nothing. There's nothing going on, Lord. What's going on? Hey, there's a lesson to be learned in the nothing of life. Maybe there's a time to learn. The time that God's wanting to speak to you and to be still and to know that he is God. You know there's times in life that the Lord will teach me and you lessons so that we could grow closer to him. There's times that the Lord will let me and you know what it feels like to not feel his presence, Brother Josh, so we're thankful when we feel his presence. There's times I believe that the Lord will let me and you, let me and you know what it feels like to feel his presence and then along for his presence. So we want it, Brother, jo Brother Charles. We're thankful for it. Amen. Hey, we'd be spoiled brats if the Lord just gave me and you everything we wanted. Hey, you ever notice that people that get everything they want, they expect it. They expect it. Everything they want, they just got an expectation. They're going to get a handout for everything. Everybody in this world that's been spoon-fed and has uh, fed with the silver spoon in their mouth, they expect everything to be handed to them. And when they don't, there's a fit to be thrown. Imagine if God gave me and you just everything we wanted right there on the blink of a dime, right at the drop of a hat. We prayed for a million bucks. God gives us a million bucks. Amen. We prayed for a billion dollars. God gives us a billion dollars. We'd be spoiled. And then when God don't give us what we want, oh, Lord, what's going on? Why ain't you giving me what I want? I, I prayed for a million dollars. You give it to me, and I prayed to you over and over, but uh, this time I, ain't pr uh, I prayed to you, and you ain't give me what I was looking for. We'd become spoiled. Amen. Remember what God has told you, and when God says it, you can mark it down. Verse 41, we see Elijah was... Uh, uh, aware of his surroundings. Verse 42, we see that Elijah was seeking fervently. Who was he seeking? He was seeking the Lord. You know, I find that in this scripture in verse number 42 that it said, And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. Now, mind you, verse number one told us that God said that rain was coming. But why did Elijah pray so fervently if God already told him? Why did Elijah cast himself down on the earth and start praying so hard in verse 42 if God's already told him? You know why? I find that there was nothing going on. I find that we find in the scripture that it said that there was nothing in verse 43. It said, it said Ahab went up and he looked and said, there was nothing. And he said, go again seven times. Go until you get something. Go until you see something. Amen. Hey, we serve a God that can make something out of nothing. And when you see nothing, amen, keep on bringing it to Jesus. Keep on bringing it to the Father. Keep on praying. Keep on studying. Because we serve the God that can make something out of nothing today. What a great God me and you serve. Amen. Imagine, imagine casting yourself down upon the earth. And putting your face, just digging your hands into your face, in between your legs, and saying, Oh God, please send the rain, Lord, please send the rain. And you're praying, and he says, Go up and look, and there's still nothing. Still nothing. There's been times me and you prayed, and we don't get nothing, Brother Josh. Hey, what a great man of God that we see in Elijah. And he still prayed like that. He prayed, and he prayed, and he seeked, and he seeked, and he seeked. And he tells his servant to go up. He says, go and look. Comes back, there's nothing. There's nothing. You know what Elijah didn't say? Well, nothing's going on, I quit. 
Nothing's going on. God's giving up. He ain't listening no more. You know what he said? He said, go up seven more times. I find it so interesting that on that seventh time that he went up, he seen a cloud. Huh. Hey, if we see a cloud coming, Brother Charles, we don't think, oh, man, here comes the rain. Here comes the rain out of this little bitty cloud, amen. But Elijah had enough faith to know that that little bitty cloud was sent from God. Thank God for the golden nuggets and mine in your life, the small things that lets us know that the big thing is coming today. What a God that me and you serve. It said that, it go, uh, verse number 43, it said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. Verse number 44, and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea. You know, Elijah seen the blessing, and he took it, and he ran with it. When God starts dropping them little golden nuggets, take it and run with it, amen. Hey, when God starts to bless and them little things come along, Brother Josh, take it up and just say, thank you, Lord. I know the big thing's coming. I know the big prayer that I've been praying for is coming, amen. I'm just seeing a glimpse. I see a little bit of the hope that you have given me. How many times have me and you prayed for something and we're waiting for the big thing, for this specific prayer to be answered, that we forget these little golden nuggets that the Lord's dropping? Here you go, son. Here you go. There's another one. Here's another one. We walk right by him looking for that big one. But what about that little cloud? That little cloud that popped up. Hey, there's a little glimpse into glory, Brother Josh. I love that song. And the sun's coming up in the morning. Every tear shall be dried from our eyes. And this old place is going to give way to glory. And like an eagle, I'll take to the skies. You know something today, Brother Josh? I look forward to them little blessings that knowing today it's going to be gone tomorrow. And tomorrow I could do better to today than today if the Lord allows me to wake up tomorrow. It's the little blessings in life that keeps us going. It's some little things in life that helps us to not give up amen quit looking for the big thing all the time and take a glimpse at the small things that God's given me and you maybe you do got nothing but what a great testimony when God gives something out of nothing what a great testimony when the Lord makes something out of somebody that was a reject and a nobody we serve a great God tonight, church, amen. And when it seems like all hope is lost, here comes Jesus right on time. I like to say in verse 41, we see, be aware of your surroundings. Elijah heard that the storm was a-coming. In verse 42, we see that Elijah seeked fervently, amen. He seeked hard, and he was seeking the Lord's face, and he buried his hands in his face and, and was crying out to God. And the last thing we see is this, the supernatural. We serve a supernatural God tonight, church. We serve a divine God that His nature is supernatural. God's nature is supernatural. God can do whatever He wants on His time scale. He can, he can make the oceans. He can speak and say, let there be light, and there can be light. Let there be, let there be rain, and there can be rain. Verse 43. It says, and said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up, say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. You know what I see in verse 44? I see big faith, Brother Josh. I see big faith. You know what I see? I, I see something. I see that, uh, that Elijah was told that there was a little bitty cloud. But out of that little bitty cloud, here comes a great big amount of a rain. What does that mean? He told him to go down and to prepare for that rain. He said, hey, there's a lot of rain. Come look at it with me in the scripture. Verse 44, and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. That's what he was told, a little cloud. First time, there was nothing. Seventh time, there was a little cloud. 
And Elijah took that little bitty cloud as an answer. Here it comes. Here comes the rain. Here comes the rain. And he said in verse number 44, and he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. You know what that means? There's a lot of rain coming, Brother Ralph. Hey, how's there going to be a lot of rain out of a little cloud? <laughs> Ain't you glad that the Lord can make something big out of something little? Ain't you glad that the Lord knows how to stretch a bill? Ain't you glad that the Lord knows how to stretch if you got $50 on a paycheck rest the spend of the week that the Lord can stretch it, Brother Ralph? Ain't you glad that the Lord can turn something small into something big today? Quit looking down on life and look up to the, because the blessings come from up on high tonight. What to do with nothing? You're allowed to be nothing until God turns it into something. That little bitty cloud, amen. He said, out of that little bitty cloud, he said, he said, go tell Ahab there's a lot of rain coming. Go tell Ahab that he better get down because here comes a storm. I can only imagine Ahab saying, what? A storm from that little bitty cloud? I can barely see it with binoculars. There's a storm coming. What's he talking about? Hey, if nobody else gets it, Brother Josh, thank God that the Lord speaks to me and you and we don't need an answer from man. We need an answer from God in a biblical way. Hey, there's so many people in today's time, Brother, jo Brother Charles, that's saying they're getting an answer from God, but it ain't in the Bible. It's in a non-biblical way. We need answers from God that comes from a, a, to us in a biblical way tonight. I like to say first off is this. I told somebody this one day. They were seeking for a sign, seeking for a sign. I'm waiting for the Lord to give me a sign. I'm waiting for the Lord to give me a sign. I'm waiting for the Lord to give me a sign. Well, I heard it several times, Brother Charles, and I started to pray. And I said, Lord, give me an answer to give this man. Give me an answer to help this man. He's looking for a sign. He's looking for a sign. And he's looking for a sign over something very serious. He's waiting for an answer from heaven in some type of sign out here in the world. Reads the Bible, reads the King James Bible, goes to a Bible-believing Baptist church. One day the Lord spoke to me and said this, tell him to quit looking for a sign, the sign's right here. The man got us out of that book and started praying, he came back to me the next day and said, the Lord gave me my sign, it was inside of this book. He was looking for a sign out there, but the sign was inside of this book. Amen. What are you getting to today? That there's small blessings in here. There's big blessings to be found in here. And if we would seek God in the way that God's told us to seek Him, we could see the hope in the sign me and you are looking for inside of this book. There's a still sound voice, Brother, Char Brother, J Brother Charles, and some people like to call it as a still sound voice, talking about the Holy Spirit, that still sound voice. Do I believe that God's still speaking to people in 2024? Absolutely. But through the way that the Bible tells us, you better be careful who you listen to that say that they're hearing from God and they're not. There's a lot of people say that they're hearing from God, but they're not hearing from God, and it's done in an unbiblical way in saying God told me that we can get to heaven in a different way outside of Jesus Christ. No, he has not. That's a lie. Straight from the pits of hell, amen. Hey, I like to say today that I'm thankful that the Lord's still speaking to me and you, and I'm very, very cautious when somebody tells me, I've been told this whenever I was younger, Nobody knew, but I've been told this, and I was told it by somebody that I don't put very much trust in. You know what I was told? I was told that I was going to be an evangelist. God's told me that you're going to be an evangelist. And I thought about it, and thank God the Lord gave me enough discernment. I thought to myself, Lord, how'd you tell them, but you didn't tell me? Be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you let prophesy over your life and tell you that this is God's will. Amen. Hey, but I like to say today that there's certain, uh, there's certain things we see in the Scripture where, where, where the Lord knits people together, Brother Josh. That the Lord helps us together. What are you saying with that? What I'm trying to get to today is there's still some spiritual beings on this earth. There is still some people that get in touch with God, Brother Charles. But you must have discernment. 
Amen. Hey, I tell you, I'm very, very careful when people tell me they're having dreams and they're having visions and they're having this and they're trying to tell me what the Lord's got in store for my life. Amen. How do you know but the Lord ain't telling me? How do you know I'm going to be an evangelist but the Lord ain't told me I'm going to be an evangelist? I ain't telling you today that you're going to get this. I ain't telling you today you're going to get that. I'm not telling you to send me a $1,000 seed money. What I am telling you today is that for a fact beyond a shadow of a doubt that we serve a God. That could turn nothing into something. I ain't saying what something he's going to turn that nothing into. But I can tell you this beyond a shadow of a doubt. That God could turn something out of nothing. How many of us have a testimony on that tonight? We all know the goodness of God. We've all felt the goodness of God. Amen. When you look back past life's journey and, and the road that the Lord's brought you on. There's been times you felt like giving up. Maybe throwing in the towel. Maybe not as strong in the faith as others, but you want to know something? Here comes the Lord. Kicks that nothing out of the way and places something on your trail. Here you go. What a God being you serve tonight, amen. God's been faithful. He's been true. And I'm thankful today we serve a God that can turn nothing, out, uh, make something out of nothing. And when it seems like there's nothing going on, there's something going on up there. And when it feels like there's nothing... When it feels like there's nothing going on, amen, I'm thankful today that there is something going on. You know, you can find the something in the nothing. You ever heard that you can find the diamond in the rough? You ever heard that you can find whenever it seems like you start to scrape the bottom of the barrel and it's all said and done, amen, but then the Lord starts filling that barrel up and you'll never hit the bottom? I'm thankful, Brother Josh, that we serve a God that you'll never scrape the bottom of the barrel, amen. It might seem like it's low, might seem like it's dry, and you're wondering, where's God at? Where's the Spirit at? Why ain't my prayer life like it used to be? What's going on, God? Help me. And then here's something right out of nothing, Brother Ralph. What a God me and you serve. What a God me and you serve. Amen. That blessed my heart when I seen that they, he said there is nothing. And he said go again seven times. You want to know something? When you feel like there ain't nothing, keep on taking it to the Lord. When it feel like prayers ain't getting answered, keep on being persistent. When it feels like there ain't nothing going on and you're wondering what's going on and you're weak in the faith and it feels like your faith is dried up, amen, hey, just keep on looking toward heaven, Christian. The Lord can help you tonight. We're going to be finished up right there. We serve a God that can make something out of nothing. We serve a God that can make a, a sound when it's silent. We serve a God that can make light when it's dark. We serve a God that, we serve a God that can show up when we think that he ain't showing up, Brother Josh. God does what he wants, when he wants how he wants, despite if me and you like it or not. Hold on to the promises God's given me and you. We find a lot of promises in this book. I find beyond a shadow of a doubt, Brother Charles, that I'm going to heaven. I've trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been saved born again. I'm going to heaven. Right now, it might seem like a small cloud. You know why? You know why? Because we walk in this life and the cares of life start to get in the way sometimes of the things that God's promised in his book. There's times that me and you get a little bit rough patches in our life and we get a little bit down and we wonder what's going on. Well, it just seems like there ain't much going on and our faith starts to go a little bit flat. But you know, you can air that thing back up, glory to God. I'm thankful today when your faith starts to go flat, it don't have to stay flat. Amen. Hey, when it seems like there ain't nothing, Brother, brother Ralph, the Lord can make something out of nothing. Glory to God. That small cloud said the size of a man's hand. What in the world? And then he had to look out and he said, well, there's something out there, but it don't look like much. Might not look like much. You might not have much to brag about. Your house may not be a mansion. I don't have a mansion, but I do on that side. Your car may not be much to look at. Your clothes may be dirty. Your pockets may not have very much in them. You might only have a couple dollars. You may not eat out at the best at Ruth's Chris at Texas Roadhouse. It might not be much, but at least you got something, amen. 
And I like to say, Brother Josh, everything that I got, the Lord's given me. So what do I got to complain about? What do you got to complain about if God's given it to you? God's giving it to you. Take it and run with it. Amen. Hey, I got one more clothes. Did God give them to you? Okay, you got something better than somebody that's got a $40,000 Rolex on. God's giving it. Praise God. God's been good. He makes something out of nothing, Christian. We may be low in number, but what if this is what God wants us to have? We're going to complain over it? We're going to gripe over it? We're going we're gonna to mourn over it, Brother Josh? It's okay to have a burden, but it's another thing to be thankful for what the Lord's given me and you. Hey, I can see it afar off, amen. Hey, I know that if we stick to this book and we build in a biblical way, God's going to give me and you what we're looking for. But you want to know something? you got to keep on praying. Look at Elijah, the great man of the Bible. He didn't just say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, the Lord's going to do it. He's going to do it. He didn't walk out with his chest held high and his head up high, amen. Hey, you want to know what he did? He went and threw himself on the earth and put his hands in his face and started to seek God and said, oh, God. I can only imagine him saying, Lord, you said you was going to send the rain, but where's it at? Where's it at, Lord? What's going on? I can only imagine if he was crying, but he went and got alone with God. Just go get alone with God, Christian. When's the last time that you've gotten alone with God? I believe that we would get out of our prayer calls and a lot more peaceful if we got alone with God a lot more. Amen? Let's get alone with God. Find some time in your day to get alone with God. Your day is not as bad as you think it is. Your life is not as rough as you think it is. Amen. Look at what God's given you. And God's blessings are good enough for me, Brother Josh. And they're good enough for you. What are you saying with that is? Quit looking on the downside all the time and start looking on the good side. That seems like a simple preaching, but that's biblical. What do you mean by that? You think that the Lord said... Oh, well, I can't die for these people. He's an alcoholic. He's a murderer. He's a liar. He's a cheater. He's a manipulator. She's a this. She's a that. She's a this. No, you know what he's seen? He's seen the souls inside of me and you. He's seen a soul worth saving. He's seen something in nothing. My goodness, that should make you feel something, amen. If it don't, there's something wrong to think that God sees something inside of nothing, Brother Josh. He sees something worth saving inside of nothing, Brother Charles. Why has God been so good? Because He wants to. He wants to save souls. He wants to bless. He's a great God tonight, church. And I pray that some of us have got some encouragement out of this. But if you're here today and you're lost, you can be saved and know this great God that I'm talking about. The Bible said it's very, 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 very simple to be saved. That even a little bitty child can be saved. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved saved. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The Lord can save you today and he wants to save you. He's came to seek and to save those which are lost. And I tell you brother Josh I was lost. But now I'm found. I didn't have to find the Lord. He's been in the same place the whole time. He's found me, glory to God. I'm thankful today to be saved, Brother Josh, and born again and knowing that my, my nothing life is now something to live for. So many people take their life because they think that their life is worthless. Then they drop off into a place called hell if they die without Christ, Brother Josh. Your life is meaningful. Your life has a purpose. You're here for a reason. Whenever you think there ain't nothing going on, and you're wondering what's going on, what's this, what's that, and you got this nothing time in your life, just remember that people in this Bible did too. That there wasn't very much going on. But the Lord, the men you serve, can make something out of nothing. He can make light out of darkness. He can make the, straight, the way straight when it seems crooked. He could turn doubt into belief.
unbelief in a belief. Amen. Hey, I'm thankful me and you serve a great, the great and mighty God tonight. That's who we serve. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, have mercy upon us. I pray, Father, that we all 